I'm here at Garston Forge, a Victorian era blacksmith's forge that is in fact no longer in Garston, Hertfordshire, but here at the Chiltern Open Air Museum in neighbouring Buckinghamshire. It was originally built in around 1860 with these materials and then reconstructed on site at the museum in 1984. Like many of the buildings that we have here at Coam, it was originally due to be demolished, but with permissions of course, volunteers at Coam dismantled it and then rebuilt it right here in the interest of conservation. As is inevitable with old buildings, certain elements needed to be repaired, but care is always taken to make sure that those repairs are suitable. What that means is using the same sorts of materials and styles as would have been found in the original. For instance, the hearth that we have here at Garston Forge is in fact from a different local forge, but from much the same age and also about the same size, so it worked excellently as a replacement. Some of the most iconic tools of the forge are of course the hearth, bellows, anvil, vice, and the many tools that blacksmiths use in their craft. The forge still sees active use, with local practitioners coming in to do their work and also to teach on our visitor experience days, the details of which can be found on our website. Mark Harding is one such practitioner who had the very exciting opportunity to film and talk to about his craft the other day. What's one blacksmithing myth that you wish you could bust? The main one I hear is it's a dying art. And okay, it hit a bit of a low ebb in the 60s and 70s, maybe into, into the 1980s. But since then, we've been very, very busy behind the scenes. But we're, we're going more onto the uh, creative, bespoke, making stuff that nobody else can. That could be from public works of art to a fire pit poker or a bottle opener. The other myth we hear a lot is uh, about tapping the anvil. Now, a lot of people will tell you that uh, it's to get the scale off the hammer. That's a rubbish. What you're doing by bouncing the hammer off the anvil is two things. Firstly, you're keeping the momentum going. The hammers are quite heavy. So you're yanking on that thing all the day. You can use them shim up. So by bouncing it, you're keeping that momentum going in between orientating the metal to where you want it to be. Uh, the other thing, you've got this mental rhythm going on. It's, it's a subconscious thing. Just keeping that rhythm going, basically. So, do you have a favourite historical period? And if so, why? The 18th, the 18th century. Because the 18th century was a high point in many ways for for blacksmithing, if you look at the work of Jean Tijoux at Hampton Court, for example, nothing like that had been seen here before. But the thing is, this is 300 years ago. The craft is constantly evolving, moving on. The easiest way to sum it up is that a modern blacksmith would generally have one foot in the past and the other in the future, and we're straddling the present. So it's constantly moving forward. What is the best part of Experience Days at Coam? It's watching people progress. They come in, they can't even hold the hammer properly. And suddenly it clicks. It's got oils. It's not unusual to see people all thumbs and all over the place, basically, in the morning. And so they go, go away and have some lunch. And they come back and they're powering away as if they've been doing it for years. But it's just watching that learning curve. And it is quite a steep learning curve. Nothing to be afraid of because you know, you're making stuff happening. You've, you've taken that piece of hot metal and you're creating something out of it. That's going to probably outlive all of us. What are the best and worst parts of being a blacksmith? One of each. Right, the best part is, for me, is creating something that's going to be around long after I'm gone. It's going to be enjoyed, loved, used. That's the important thing. I like to make the stuff that people use. The downside is it's very difficult to make a living. Partly because of some of the urban myths I've been talking about, because people just don't know we exist. I can give you an example. I was contacted in the week by uh, a chap who had a, well, he's got a classic car. These old cars have got metal bumpers and he had a bit of a, an accident with it. He Googled blacksmiths near me. My name came up. He came round, brought this bumper with him, and he could not believe that there were people like me still around. Two hours later, I'd fixed his bumper, and it's good to go. 
It's very, very easy to say, oh, that's broken, throw it away. You'd be surprised at what a blacksmith can do. If it's made out of metal, there's a good chance they could do something with it.